Hey folks, welcome back to the video. In this video, we're going to be looking at different ways you can import databases from websites into your Google Sheet. So in one of my previous YouTube shots, I'd shown you how I use the import HTML to import HTML formula to solve my problems of getting databases from various web pages. I could just use the import HTML formula and automatically get my data into the sheet. If I were to do that manually, I would have to go copy paste the data from the database from the database that is there on the net and then copy it into my Google sheet, which is me a little dumb idea. And that's where the import HTML formula solves all my problems. But in this video, we're going to be looking at different ways by which you can import data into your Google sheets. We'll be starting out by importing data using the import HTML function where we'll be using the import table and we're going to be importing a list after which we're going to do some self referencing and you inside the import HTML function after which we're going to be using the query function with the import HTML format to limit number of columns and get custom data. And in the end, I'm going to be showing you how to import data using Google Apps. So let's just get started. So first off, I'm going to be starting out by just showing you the import HTML formula. So I'm just going to type in import HTML. So here you can see you have to first of all, specify the URL of the web page that you want to put in. So for the first example, I'm going to be using this Netflix data that is there here. So I'm going to open up the codes. I'm going to paste this in after which I'm going to be entering the query here. So inside this query, I need to specify whether the data I'm importing, is it a table or a list? So for the first example, I'm going to do in table after which I'm going to be specifying the index that's going to be which table you have number of tables inside the website. I want the first table I'm going to go here, close the brackets and hit on enter. Here you can see my data has successfully come into the Google sheet perfectly. So now let's just understand the, the web, web page that we have here. So the import HTML formula, it just, it is, it can be used to scrape text from a table or a list. So an HTML table is defined by the slash table tag, whereas the list is defined by a UL tag or an OL tag that depends whether it's an ordered list or an unordered list. So here we have started out by specifying the URL here, right? And this is going to be the list. So these are the list of the tables that are available in the website. And this is the specific table with the data. So let's just look at how to import a list into my Google sheet. So I'm just going to change the formula here and all I'm going to go and do is I'm going to change this table to a list I'm going to hit on enter. You can see we got the list that was available here. So this is how you can import uh, lists into your web page. So we started out by getting the tables and then we started out getting by the lists. So this is what the basically the import HTML formula was. And this is how you can import um, either tables or either lists into your Google sheet. So now that we've completed the import data using the basic import HTML function, where we just imported a table and then imported a list, we're going to be looking at some cell referencing in the import HTML function. So I'm going to go to my, oops, I'm going to go to my second sheet here. So here you can see I've declared the URL, I've declared the query and I've declared the index. So all I have to do is go here, type in import HTML inside which I'm to pass B1, B2, and B3. Close the brackets, hit on enter, and my data will successfully come in here. Right. So this is what we have to do for the second one. It's it's a pretty basic thing. You just declare your things here, and um, you can even record a macro for this. Whenever you want, um, whenever you put in a link here, it should automatically go use the import HTML formula and get the data. If you want to learn how to use macros, I'll be leaving a video link in the description. You can check that out. And um, okay, so now we'll move on to our third topic that's going to be using the query function within the import HTML function. What would the query function do in this case? So here basically, um, you can see in the genre section of this data set, we have comedy, drama, comedy, drama, action, science fiction, and different, different romantic drama, science fiction, and stuff like that. What if I wanted to just get the data for drama? I wanted to just see the data that is available for the drama section. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to go behind the import HTML and I'm going to type in query and open up the bracket and just add and close here. After which in this part of the code is the real action that's going to be happening here. 
right so we're going to start out by opening up this here i'm going to say select i'm going to add a star after which i'm going to be writing the conditions where my column two where my column two is equal to and here i want to specify say drama here i'm going to run enter here you can see the entire genre that I wanted is only drama and this is how you can use the query function to get specific data here. Now um, the second one is going to be getting the limited number of columns. So we've just we talked about getting custom data first and then so if I had to limit the number of columns so let's take this data set for this example let's copy this out let's go here paste this out here but now it will show you an error because it doesn't match the so, so if I just remove this for now, I just hit on enter. Oh, you still have an error because the query function isn't there. So if I just go here, click on enter. Okay. That's the right thing. Okay. Now if I click on enter, you can see my data will successfully come in here, but you have a lot of columns of data here but I just want specific columns out of this data set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here. I'm going to type in the query function again. And I'm going to do add a comma here and I'm going to do, I'm going to do select, oops, I'm going to do select and um, I want specific columns. So let's just say I want the column two three and four or I want the first, second, third, fourth column. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do call two, call three, call four. Right. And I'm going to go here. I'm going to hit on enter and see, I've just got the specific columns that I wanted. I wanted this. I wanted this. I wanted this. And I have exactly got that into my Google sheet. This is how you can get specific columns and custom data using the query function in the import HTML formula. Right now we're going to move on to the last section of this video that's going to be importing data using Google Apps Script. So I'm going to go to my Google Apps Script here. I'm going to go to the extensions and open up the Apps Script editor. Okay, so our Google Apps Script editor has launched. I'm just going to clear this out. I'm going to write my first. It is going to be insert data. And inside this function, I'm going to be starting out by getting the Google Sheet. So I'm going to do where SS spreadsheet app, oops, uh, spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet. And after which I'm going to do where S where sheet and I'm going to do SS dot get sheet by name. And here I'm going to go here. I'm going to copy this name. I'm going to go here, paste it out here. So here we have got the Google sheet and uh, we're going to move on. I'm going to do variable uh, data inside which I'm going to be pick up my code. So I'm going to do equal to, I'm going to do import HTML. I'm going to open this out, open the codes here. I'm going to paste the URL that we're going to be using. I'm going to add a comma. Then you specify the query that's going to be a table. I'm going to add another comma. I'm going to be specifying this um, then the index of the table that I want, right? After which I'm going to be doing SS or sheet dot not get range in, and I'm going to start out, I think by the A1 cell and inside which I'm going to do set, set values, set value and inside which I'm going to pass in data. Go ahead and click on save. This is our code. I'm just going to print a confirmatory message saying log data has been pasted. I'm click on save. And I think our code is ready and good to go. So let's just go ahead and click on run. We'll have to first review the permissions. We'll have to go here, click on the your email address, go to advanced, go to the project. Just click on allow. I 
can see data has been pasted. If I go back to my Google Sheet, oh, it's showing me an error. Oh, right, we have not closed the bracket for the formula here. I'm going to click on save. I'm going to run this again. Okay. So we're going to close the bracket here. I'm going to click on save. And I'm going to go and I click on run again. It has been pasted. If I go back here, the Google App Script has successfully brought in the data from the web app into your Google Sheet. So this is all for this video. I hope you have understood how to import uh, web page data into your Google Sheets in three to four different ways. We started out by talking about the generic import HTML function where we imported a table followed by importing a list. After which we did some cell referencing inside the import HTML formula. After which we use the query function with the import HTML formula to get custom data and even limit the number of columns that you want to import into your Google Sheet. After which finally we looked at the Google Apps Script part of it, how you can import web page data using Google Apps Script. I'll be leaving the code link in the description and also I'll be leaving the import HTML documentation in the description if you want to read about it and get to know more about it. Also guys, I have launched a new YouTube channel, Coffee Keyboard, that's in collaboration with one of my friends, where we'll be posting out different programming videos, we'll be talking about in-depth concepts and in-depth libraries that are there, and we'll be sharing our knowledge about programming and libraries that we've learned through the years. So I'll be leaving that channel link in the description also. We've posted out our first introduction video where we, where we have talked about what we are and what we're going to be doing. So. It would mean the world to me if you would go and just subscribe and like the video and stay tuned for more content. If you like this video, then don't forget to like, share and for more content, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one.